This is going to be a really good video. Today on the Pinball Workshop, we're going to get into oscilloscopes. In fact, this is a brand new oscilloscope that I purchased, and I'm ready to dive into it, and let's learn together. All right, so for today, I have uh, actually had this for about a week or so. Uh, but I finally got a chance uh, with travel from work to kind of dive into it. So this is a Rigel oscilloscope. It's a DS1102E. Uh, this kind of ranges in the uh, maybe low, uh, high 200s, low 300s range. Uh, so I haven't messed with an oscilloscope in, check the watch, uh, yeah, about 16 years. So the last time I used one of these was in college. I haven't had a chance to use one since. So let's see what I remember about using the oscilloscope today. As part of this video, this is going to be really kind of a tech and tools, but also learning with me. So, you know, I, I think it's been apparent by the videos that you've seen on the channel so far, there's a lot of things I still don't know. And using the oscilloscope is something that I haven't used in a, in a long, a long time. So I'm going to start figuring out how to use one of these when it comes to uh, pinball, pinball repair, pinball restoration, specifically in the, in the board perspective. So we're going to open this guy up and see what we got. Ooh. And we start with a box in a box in a box. Rushing, we're doing our Russian doll impersonation, so let's go a one level deeper. Sweet. There is a power cord. Uh, instructions. go. So let's talk a little a bit about the Rigel oscilloscope as I've opened it, or as I start to open it up here. Um, I was looking for an oscilloscope that was going to meet partly some of my needs. One of being A, not extremely expensive, uh, and B, just figuring out from a pinball perspective, what did I think was not overkill. So there's a couple things I wanted to have. One was I wanted to have 100 megahertz, which again, is probably overkill what I'll ever need from a pinball perspective. But if I end up taking in part one of my daughter's toys, uh, like the Tickle Me Elmo that broke the other day, I, I have some, <laughs> some way that I, mean, I can look at other things outside of just from a pinball perspective. So, so cost was a big reason why I went with the Rigel. Uh, the other thing is I also, I didn't necessarily feel like I needed the four channels. So we'll talk more about what the channels will do for you later. But in this case, I went with a two channel oscilloscope. So you're going to find a lot more YouTube videos. Uh, if you go to like the EDD blog, uh, YouTube channel, uh, there's a lot more videos about why you should select a specific oscilloscope. But for me, I just needed something from a pinball perspective that was easy for me to use, relatively cheap, and, and something I think that is going to give me a deeper level of insight when I have weird or odd or quirky issues that may occur, you know, on an address bus line and a data bus line outside of, of a logic probe. So let's get this guy fired up. Okay, let's go ahead and get this powered on. Ooh, pretty. Now, one thing about uh, these specific uh, oscilloscopes here is that they do have firmware. So I, I haven't checked the firmware version. I, I'm going to assume or imagine there is going to be a new firmware version that's going to be released. But before I go through the process of actually upgrading or updating that firmware, does this have legs? It does have legs. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the key things that I'm hoping, um, some of the key uh, 
things about this specific uh, oscilloscope that I'm hoping to achieve. So I've just got a, a single uh, uh, um, um, tester here that I want to set up because I'm only going to probably be using from a one channel perspective, but I went ahead and turned this on. Uh, there is a small fan you may be able to hear right here. Uh, but the most part, starts up pretty easily. I've, I've got my uh, speech of Chester, and there are some built-in uh, um, uh, sine waves that you can do just from a testing perspective. So I can take my little clip. I should be able to put it on here and get a specific channel test wave. So I'm going to turn off channel. Uh, which one had it is here? Okay. Turn off channel two. I think I should be able to trigger this. Uh, nope. All right, but I need to zoom out. Move this down to vertical and change my 100 megavolts, millivolts. Where's the zoom? Watch me play and not remember. So let's do a run stop. Stop it so we get to see. And there is a way that I can change. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Nope. Aha. There we go. I knew I'd find it if I kept playing it. So here we are. Here's our uh, sign wave uh, that we've uh, used from our testing perspective. And we can see that uh, we've got this. We can we can zoom in from a time perspective. Now we're at, at 10 picoseconds here. Um, I'll be able to see that if I pull off this uh, specific thing, we'll see, you see that go right back to from normal. And we have one, I think that's ground. Uh, so that's not gonna do anything for us. So, but we can see on our sign perspective, we are uh, generating some sort of test signal here from an oscilloscope side. So, um, I need to learn more about this. <laughs> so that's why I mean we're going to learn together. Uh, I, I've said it's been 15, 16 years since I've used an oscilloscope. Um, uh, and I need to somewhat remember how everything sen seems to work from that perspective. So uh, I need to do some playing. Oh, there's one volt. Yeah. So I'll need to do some playing and make sure I gotta walk through some manuals, work this together. But kind of part as this video is, is, is getting a board hooked up and reading some things that are relatively easy to read from a, um, a pinball diagnostic board, kind of a, a, a getting started type of approach. So do that. I'm going to learn more about how to use this and I will uh, come back to this video with a board hooked up ready to go. Here's another example that we have here for the oscilloscope on the System 9 board. In this case, we're looking at pin uh, 39 here on our 6808. This is actually going to be our clock. So you can see here that we have a, uh, what you should see from a clock, which is this kind of oscillating type of approach. Uh, and this looks to be a pretty normal or, or correct clock. And if you know anything about these boards, a lot of times you'll see this crystal down here. Uh, these crystals are not great. Uh, they, they do uh, suffer issues over time. But in this case, we can understand that from the clock perspective of this board, uh, everything looks to be good. Again, you may see if you have a bad crystal, um, just real irregularly, you know, irregular patterns in this or issues where it's pulled high, pulled low. But in this case, it looks like uh, our clock for this board is uh, running good. Let's look at another example. Here's our second example. Again, connected to the 6808, and this time looking at the IRQ. So again, we're looking for consistency here. Uh, we've got our IRQ signal here that is uh, listed appropriately. Uh, we can go into our menu. Let's just display all our different uh, key points here. So we see that there is this min-max uh, of, uh, let's see, uh, to zero to uh, uh, looks like the eight millivolts from that side. So um, what we can do here is again, I, 
I may not necessarily at this moment understand all those numbers, but in this case, I'm able to look in here and see that I have a consistency of a of a what I should see within our, our kind of signal from RRQ, and then they're a great place that I can actually test to see uh, what's going on from a board perspective. Let's look at our final example. Our final example here is going to be pin 5 of the 6808. Uh, that's going to be our VMA uh, signal as well. And we can see here I went ahead and run stop this because it's uh, obviously working here as we go. So pressing the run stop button starts to give us an understanding of what we're looking at. And we can start to see, again, a very similar approach in terms of what we should be seeing from a, um, from a, a graph perspective. So um, let me just move this around up. Should... So we can definitely see that we've got uh, uh, some key things from a V&A perspective. Again, not exactly specifically sure. Um, I, I, I have to understand this looks to be more or less correct uh, from VMA, and we know the board is working correctly today. So another key thing that we can look at to see if we can see um, what's going on from a board level perspective. So just some very elementary things. There's a lot more that I need to learn, uh, but just some key things that I've already started to play with with the oscilloscope and what we can start to see from the, uh, the CPU perspective. Some of the things here that I'm just playing with is uh, here I am uh, connecting out to the uh, one of the ROM chips here, which I believe is uh, one of the data bus lines. I'll have to confirm that. But we can actually run here. We can actually see that information. We see a lot of, of specific excuse me, specific things here that are happening on that data bus line. So we don't have a line that's pulled high or anything of that nature. We're seeing a lot of data that's being sent. So other great things that you can do is if you have a situation where you have a line pulled high, you want to dive deeper in terms of what is being sent, um, you've got the ability to do that as well. So more things I just keep playing with, but um, so far, really interesting and kind of a great learning um, aspect here in terms of working with the, uh, the board with an oscilloscope. So I'll keep uh, figuring out more things that I can do and play with as I start to continue to work on these boards. <laughs>